I'm going to start with a poem called Refrigerator 1957. I'm thinking of these old, big old refrigerators we used to uh, have. Refrigerator 1957. More like a vault. You pull the handle out, and on the shelves, not a lot. And what there is, a boiled potato in a bag, a chicken carcass under foil, looking dispirited, drained, mugged. This is not a place to go in hunger or hope. <laughs> but, but, just to the right of the middle of the middle door shelf, on fire, a lit from within, red, heart red, sexual red, wet neon red, shining red in their liquid, exotic, aloof, slumming in such company, a jar of maraschino cherries. <laughs> maraschino cherries, three quarters full, fiery globes like strippers at a church social. <laughs> maraschino, the only foreign word I knew. Not once did I see these cherries employed, not in a drink, nor on top of a glob of ice cream, or just pop one in your mouth, not once. The same jar there through an entire childhood of dull dinners. Bald meat, pocked peas, and, see above, boiled potatoes. Maybe they came over from the old country, family heirlooms, or were the status symbols bought with a piece of the first paycheck from a sweatshop which beat the pig farm in Bohemia, handed down from my grandparents to my parents to be someday mine than my child's? They were beautiful. And if I never ate one, it was because I knew it might be missed or because I knew it would not be replaced and because you do not eat that which rips your heart with joy. You never got those cherries, though. They didn't get down to you, did they? <coughs> uh, I often say, I told the kids earlier, I was going to say the joke I usually do about this poem, but uh, poets don't get a lot of money. Uh, but I got about 30 jars of uh, cherries over the years from, from, that, from that poem. One of which was like a, must have been from like a restaurant size, it was about this big uh, jar of cherries. <laughs> 